This linkage comes from the summer edition 2018 of the Stirling Newsletter for the Stirling Engine Society. Alan Organ has written an article about other matters than just the linkage, but uh, I have made this animation of the linkage to be an additional description. First off, I'll just talk about what there is here in this linkage. There are two pivot points, one on the right in blue and one on the left in red. And then additionally, well, tra traditionally, there is the main shaft in the centre at the bottom and there is a green crank disc or crank pin rope driving the mechanism and is about to mid-stroke descend to bottom of the stroke and this is driving the mechanism. On the right the blue rods are for the motion of the piston. So this is a four bar linkage so the piston is now rising to top dead centre and beginning to fall back down again and then it will rise again. So that is one half of the mechanism driving the piston. On the left hand side there is a red triangle, well it could be an elbow piece but it is a 60 degree elbow and this is driving the displacer. The black lines show the path or the locus for the bottom end of the displacer conrod. So now at top dead centre it pauses and then it comes back down to bottom dead centre. So in summary we have two pivots to help drive the displacer and the piston and these are motorised or driven from the crank pin on the crank disc. Now, how is this special? How is this linkage particular? One of the problems with the traditional near sinusoidal Stirling engine design is that when the air is supposedly hot and creating pressure and pushing the piston, uh, the displacer is simultaneously moving the air to the cold place and destroying the hot pressurization. Wouldn't it be better if the mechanism were to fully exploit the hot pressurized air without moving the air? Let's have a dwell to make the displacer wait whilst the piston crops the expansion. So let's watch the displacer. It is going to top dead centre and now it will come back down and the piston will follow it all the way that the displacer gets to bottom dead centre. So the power stroke is immediately behind the displacer. The displacer is generating hot air and the piston is exploiting that full stroke because it is only when the displacer is moving air through the regenerator that the air makes pressure and is heated and can push the piston. Simultaneously when the air is being cooled um, likewise we need a dwell to let it, things be fully exploited. Here comes the displacer to top dead centre so the air is now cold and it waits whilst the piston compresses it and then we can start the power stroke. So the displacer comes to top dead center, the air is at the bottom getting cold, and now the piston can exploit it without the air being moved and heated at the wrong time. That is how this linkage is special. 